Yo, yo, going over hand history review for you guys today, and I'm doing it with a special guest, my brother. He's got his own YouTube channel as well, which I'll plug in the link below. He's here in Vegas. We will uh, just announce that we got a new sponsor, GTL Wizard. Um, we might use GTL Wizard to go through some of these hands when we start arguing about the hands. Um, uh, link in the description below, and I hope you like that as well. So let's take a look without further ado. Previous to this hand, I just like to say that I've been three betting Tang an awful lot. I haven't been squeezing that much, but I've been three betting him a lot. So that's just the only thing I'll say before this hand plays. So Tang opens to 600, Frank calls, and I am now squeezing. All right, let's... I have ace king here. I can't remember if it's two or not. It's 22. So we're like 82k effective. I'm about to... I have ace king off. I'm in the cutoff, I believe. And it goes 600, 600. I raise. I think I can't remember exactly what sizing I make it. I think I usually make this like 11x. So that would have been 22, but then we added a bit on. So maybe I'd have made 24. But I'm in position, so I don't squeeze that big. Got his king now and Frank's in the hand. Yeah, true. 22, 11x. I, I would have gone bigger. And then we get the insta 4 bet from Tang here. Boom, here we go. Lift off. $2,200 3 bet from Ginge and a 4 bet to 7,000. So Tang 4 bets to 7,000. The graphics are completely off here. And we are. So Tang has got what? 42k behind. The, the You've got to ignore the graphics now. He's made it 7k. So he's got 38k behind now. Uh, and I decided to call. I think I'm ahead of all these bluffs. I think getting all the money in pre it's for 200 much. bigs is probably too much. I think five betting puts me in an awkward situation because then I basically have to. Five betting just denies his equity of all these bluffs. You can five bet click it and still get him to call the worst sometimes. But I yeah, we're getting a bit meta there though, aren't we? I know, no. Whereas I'm just like, I'm just trying to play solid, good poker. I think calling here is never a mistake. I think jamming sometimes is okay if he's massively overdoing it. Just deny equity from all these like queen ten two dids and whatever else bullshit he's got pre. Um but I am my bullshit detector is going off here for this four bet. Just because I've three betting so much and I guess I'm kind of half proven right by seeing the cards. I wish we couldn't see the cards for this hand because this hand is really interesting on the flop. Um but let's see the flop. But the part is now gonna be like what, fifteen K? The snap four bet is uh interesting as well. So we get ace ten nine, the pot is fifteen K, not five and a half, whatever the hell this graphics is saying. Yeah. Yeah, I heard and it's a four-way pot, not a three-way pot. I thought I heard raise. You did. But Ginge is going to be in a lot of trouble here. 4, so he bets 4,000 into what is 15,000, and it's a four-bet pot pre. Mm -hmm. So I basically, the second nuts now, because I don't think he has tens pre. I don't think he has nines to four-bet pre. They're just, they're just pretty clear calls. Mm -hmm. I'm... Thinking his bluffs are going to be some kind of ace X. I wasn't necessarily thinking ace 10 suited or ace 9 suited. I think this is the kind of guy that's going to call ace 10 suited always. Ace 9 suited probably should have thought about a little bit more, to be honest, given that's what he has. Um, but I'm thinking he's got all the way down to like ace 2, ace 5, maybe some ace queens. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with this board. I'm pretty happy with my hand. Uh, I think we're quite deep. So I think now is a good time to start raising and start punishing some of his bluffs and start making him bluff catch with like queens and kings. I don't mind either way. Though obviously, if he's going to bet call the worst ace, then raise is going to be great. We'll put her in position. The pot's so big already. I also don't yep. mind just calling, letting him bluff because we're just we, we're so far ahead of all the hands we're ahead of. I think my line was if I have a diamond, I would call. Yeah. And then if I don't have a diamond, I'm going to raise because he's also got some random combos like maybe like ten. I mean, he might forward bluff ten lines to the preflop to be fair, but he's got some, like you don't know. You got to kind of judge the state of mind the guy. I know he's forward bluffing preflop, or at least have a strong idea that he is. But if he's not, then. He's playing his normal ranges and normal bluffs, then we're absolutely loving life on this flop. And we're going to punish him when he's got ace queen and uh, and any any worse hands. So I decided to put in the raise. He bets 4k as well, which is quite small, into 15k. So I decided to put in a small raise, which kind of puts him in the bin a lot as well mm -hmm. with some of his worst stuff. So I make it 10k in position. He's going to struggle to fold like kings, queens, and jacks. Yeah, top pair. Top pair. Exactly, yeah. I could have small. And then I get to dictate the action. I get to bet small on the turn. And just really milk whatever he's got, and then I get to put in like 30k into like 60k on the river and stuff like that versus his queen. Yeah, I want to make sure we stack his queen, which yeah. is pretty credible. Born, I heard a raise to 7,000. I think there's way more money in this pot. Hopefully, we can see. So I raised the 10k, and basically the best board by hand. We're going to run this one on DTL Wizard and see what it says. We'll, we'll call it 200 bigs, pre. Yep, if we can. Um, so yeah, so we raised the 10k, and then Tang, what are you thinking here? I think, I think as Tang. 
obviously we don't want to give free cards to draws obviously we're worried about, I, I have more sets here than tank i have trapped aces but i probably don't raise that mm. i have trapped tens well not trapped tens i have tens that call i have nines that call for example if i did squeeze them i probably wasn't going to squeeze nines in game to be honest just because i was ready for this four bet and you have ace ten suited yeah and i have ace ten suited for sure i might i, I occasionally fall to the four bet, but ace ten suited when it made it quite big but i have some ace ten suited and then i have some like maybe jack ten of diamonds maybe i have like 10 9 of well, I don't have 10 9 of diamonds, but I have some combo draws like maybe Queen Jack of Diamonds, I have King Queen, Queen King Queen of Diamonds. Hands kind of like that that can mm. maybe raise, but I honestly, honestly, I'm probably more value oriented when I raise here and I probably just call with these draws to be honest. Um, so as Tang, what are your thoughts? Uh, do you want a three bet? Do you want a call? Well, he's actually got 5k less because of the, the error in the graphics, he's yeah, 33k. So he's yeah. putting in a lot of his stack and he's out of position and your your raise is is pretty polar and like you could have the ace king ace queen and just be running it as far as he's concerned so you thinking about ripping here at a position i, I would heavily consider it yeah because there's so many bad turns and we don't want you to just play raise check and realize all your equity with yeah. some random hands so I, I think i mainly would jam for like 33k there with the ace nine yeah i think he does think even weirder which kind of upsets me i think he makes it twenty four thousand. raise to ten thousand hopefully we can take a glimpse at this pot because i believe there's more money in this pot That was very clear. Wow. So Tang makes it 24,000 here. And my repre was that he's up to something. And when you raise these flops, sometimes people are like, they're not expecting a raise ever. So they think they, so that I feel like he sometimes thinks that I'm also like up to something here. I know I shouldn't get too much into the meta, but that's, mm. that's kind of like what I'm thinking. I, I, I felt like he was up to something pre-flop. And I felt like some people think that I'm up to something here when I raise this flop in position. Mm. So when he three bets, he's basically all in for 33K. And when he jams here, I think he can have some, I think he's more likely to have combo draws than me. So if he had like 10X of diamonds, like all the way Broadway from- Broadway diamonds. Broadway diamonds, Queen 10X of diamonds. And then, Jack, and then the also he can have Ace King himself. Yeah. I think Ace King himself was like the main hand that I was, I was thinking. And to be honest, I thought I basically had the nuts. Mm. Cause I don't think he has a three bet range of aces here. I think he just always flats that. I don't think he's the kind of guy that four bets 10 is pretty. I definitely don't think he four bets nines, and then so I'm maybe partially worried about ace ten ace nine, but not enough in a four bet pot for me to like go not go broke with ace king. So I just put the money in here. Yeah, I'm, I think well, it's a good. Well, we raise because we think we got the best hand, and does it, it doesn't matter what weird way he wants to get the money in. Yeah, just think we got the, he might have ace queen, and just think he's good. So yeah. at this point, we're obligated to go broke. Ray, bet four thousand, raise ten thousand, back to Tang, who makes it twenty. Four. He's obviously 5k less, and I'm treating this as basically an all-in. Yeah. $1,000. And an all-in and a snap call. Oh, my gosh. He's got aces. $90,700 in the pot. There was a four-bet preflop. I guarantee that. Wow. So many times give us so much more outs. That is more. Wow. We've already once or twice a car. Twice. Alright. Another terrible time. Pass yeah. the Dodger King. Nope. Or a time. And Thang is going to win the ninety thousand seven hundred dollar pot. So we're gonna run through that through GTO Wiz because that was a ninety K pot at one hundred two hundred, which is obviously annoying to lose those, but well, let's see what GTO Wizard wants to do. So we'll take a look here. All right, so we do what we do is we go cash. We're going to call it six max. We're going to call it 200 BBs effective. And we have to run this simply because it's deeper. So we'll confirm that. So let's, I squeeze the cutoff. So let's give him, uh, we're slightly, it's obviously slightly wider. So do we want to give him, we'll give him under the gun 2.5. And then we'll give the hijack a, I just not supposed to ever call here. <laughs> Whatever. So we'll treat this as not a squeeze. Uh, how do we how do we do this so that the, the uh, we can just do three bet. We'll just do three apart. Okay. So hijack folds, cut off three bets. The bottom folds. The small blind folds. The big blind folds. So first of all, so let's have a look at what his reaction is to my three bet. So you can see ace nine suited is a fold, but we are still expecting him to have. Um, I think this range is reasonable. Like he's going to four bet ace. He's going to four bet ace king suited. All right. So he's this is this is a pretty reasonable. Range, I think he's gonna always fall with aces, ace king, kings, ace king sometimes, sometimes core, king queen suited sometimes, some mix of these hands. Uh, he's gonna flat a lot of this stuff. 
He's not supposed to have Ace-9, which may break the sim in a minute, but he's going to bluff some of this stuff. So this is kind of what I expected, but I expected him to be a bit more weighted in-game to having more of this than he should have. So anyway, uh, he does 4-bet. And they're going to take action, and he 4-bets to... Let's say 34. He definitely 4-bet less than that. Oh no, maybe he did. Whatever. 34 bigs, whatever. That is about right. 7,000. Let's days. have a look at my Ace-Kings. And we are supposed to do some jamming with Ace-King, even this deep, which is interesting, because I didn't expect that, to be honest. Um, I thought that like, I mean, obviously calling is not a mistake. We can see that uh, obviously calling is generating some EV, right? If you go back, uh, change strategy to strategy plus EV, and then click on the Ace King, it will give you the EV difference. So, so, the, so yeah, we're pretty much indifferent between calling and forbidding. And if, if he, he plays the same range. Do you think he's over forbidding to commit call slightly better? Is that a good adjustment, do you think? If he's forbid bluffing the wrong hands and too many hands. And then. it's going to, pro I'm thinking, well, given he pr proves us that he pr chooses like the ace nine suited, I felt like that made ace king more of a call. I think ace king off suit, I'd be more inclined to jam and I'd, 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 I'd trap play bases. But, yeah, yeah, I agree. And I'd probably throw in like, I don't know what we're supposed to have as a bluff there, ace jack suited. I guess I wouldn't, I wouldn't really want to jam. With, well, it's not even jamming ace jack suited, it's going for a non all in. Well, 200 big deep here, don't forget. All right, so we call. Uh, we got a flop of uh, Ace of Diamonds, was it? Ace, 10, 9, and the 10 was not a diamond. Okay, so Ace of Diamonds, 9 Diamonds, 10 Hearts. And then we'll have a look what the... So this is his betting range, which I think he's he's actually supposed to do way more checking than he probably realizes, and I think he's probably just going to lead out and bet a lot. I think this is a big issue most people have in four bet parts. Yeah. They just bet their range when, yeah. when range is, the other range Well, this is, is so tuned to big deep as well, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to have a lot more checking out of position deep. Yeah. Anyway, so he does bet. Let's say that's twenty five percent, which is about right. Yeah, and then I do mix in a raise here with Ace King and Ace King suited. Obviously, we're discounted, and obviously this is playing against the range. It's supposed to do a lot of checking as well. But when he does do a lot of betting, it'd be interesting to see if this increases my raise frequency. So we do raise Ace King. I don't think the suits are going to make a huge difference. Uh, the King of Diamonds. It likes to likes to, it likes to not have suits to raise more by the looks of that. But this King, King of Diamonds is checking is calling a bit more. King of Diamonds is betting a bit more there, but Ace of Hearts or whatever. But anyway, I think I have a suit. I have a hand that didn't have the suits anyway, right? Yeah. All right, so we do raise. And we didn't raise that big, so let's put 50%. Or uh, I space by yeah, this. This one. That's the under the gun, but we're caught. Oh, yeah. So so I raise. He made it 17. 30%. Let's do 30%. So I didn't raise very big. And then his action now is the Jam Ace 10, which is his two pairs, or three buddies Ace 10, which is his two pairs. Three bets on Ace Kings. Let's set, let's assume that he does that. Uh, raise non all in, and then my action is to get an Ace King basically always, even versus ranges that are good ranges. So given he has a few more bluffs, and I do basically he gets it in. So I, I basically I think my action is go all in, and obviously then his action is going to be call Ace Ten, call Ace King, and then obviously some of these combos or whatever he ends up having there. So. I think we're unfortunate there. I think, in fact, actually, we played the hand really well. <laughs> I think we got we got cooled. Yeah, like, I think jam, jam pre is probably more viable than we realized because of thinking he was wider. But yeah, just, you're so deep, but like. It's, but it's I quite think unnatural. I think that depends on what you think he's choosing his bluffs with. So, for example, if he's choosing more ASX bluffs, I think calling becomes really good. Whereas if he's choosing more random bluffs like eight seven suited, six five suited, I think jamming becomes better. Yeah. So. And that's you know that's harder to know what he's up to there. So, but either way, you can't go wrong by just mixing in call, mixing in jam, mixing in whatever you want to do there. So, I think I will consider a jam a little bit more next time for two to big. So that's something that I've learned from this. Mm. Um, but overall, I think I was unlucky there, especially with three betting so much pre-flop. Knew was up to something. Yo, so what you just saw issues there was the GTO Wizard. I'm giving away three GTO Wizard uh, licenses. So if you comment. Um, that you want one of these licenses in the chat uh in the in the comments then let me know and i'll sort that out for you um but let me know what you think of this hand was it a huge punt from me even though the solver says it's not what do you think in real game i think i think i think it's not a punt and we just kind of got run unlucky it's annoying that he three bet us because i think that's stronger than when he jams but even so i think he's still supposed to have ace king himself so what are we what are we going to do yeah I think it's cooler can't lose sleep over it Oh well, there's an IDK of my uh, of my uh, Vegas trip covered in that hand. Catch you on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe to my brother's channel as well. Link in the description below. Peace.